Today we're going to be talking about our very first lathe part, the Titan 84L. Unlike a milled part, a lathe will actually spin the material around and then you have your tools feeding into the material creating profiles and shapes. Very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our blueprint. We're looking at our very first front view of our part and we can see that right here. Notice the overall diameter of our part is 950 thousandths. We have a section view here going from D to D which can be found to the very right of that. We've got a whole variety of different diameter and radial measurements here. Notice in section DD here we have a detailed view. Detailed A can be found right below. And with that detailed view, there's some clarifications on the measurements of the threads. To the left of this detail, we have our isometric view. And within our isometric view, we have a detailed B, which gives some further clarification of what the diameters are stated in our external data sheet here. In our external data sheet, all this information is derived from the machinist handbook. We're going to make our way on over to Fusion 360 at any given point. If you need to pause this video, please do so to get caught up. Okay, we're, we're over here in Fusion 360. Now the very first thing that we're going to do on this is we're going to look at section DD and we're going to put in a theoretical line right down the center of our part. This line will, will be a path in which we can revolve our part later on. So we're going to go L on the keyboard. We're going to click on our top plane here. We're going to start our line right from our datum location and drag this out. As indicated by the print, this line has a length of 1 inch 800 thousandths, just like this. After you type in your line, what we're going to do right now is we're trying to keep everything simple. Is We're going to put all of our geometry in place and then afterwards we're going to come in and we're going to add dimensions to things. So what we're going to be doing right now is we're just drawing in some lines very similar to what our blueprint states. Okay, so notice I drew in a horizontal line, a vertical line, another horizontal line, another vertical line coming up, and a horizontal line which is very similar to what our detail DD is showing. Going to the front of our part, we're going to make another vertical line just like that. Now lastly we want to connect this endpoint and this endpoint together using an arc. So we're going to go up to create down to arc, three point arc, and we're going to click from this location to this location and we're going to draw an arbitrary radius arc just like that. Now after you put all your geometry in place we're going to press D on the keyboard which is the dia or the uh, dimension sh shortcut. We're going to go from our datum location because all of our measurements are a base line measurements which means that they are indicated off of one single point. We're going to go from our datum to this first point here and according to the print that measurement is one inch five hundred thousandths. One I forgot underneath we're going to go from the datum to this point and that measurement is one inch 375 thousandths and enter. Okay. Afterwards, you can actually drag your measurements up and kind of help kind of organize your workspace just like that. 
Now notice when I changed some of my measurements around here, that things kind of got a little wonky on us. That's all right. Don't be afraid. You can actually move your geometry around as long as it's got some constraints to it. And notice because it got a little wonky is we're missing one dimension. So D on the keyboard. We're going to go from this endpoint back to our datum. And according to the print, this needs to be one inch, 565 thousandths, enter. Now that we got our horizontal measurements in, we need to add in our vertical measurements. We're going to go from the datum to the tip of our nose cone here. According to the print, the diameter is 350 thousand, so I'm going to type that in, 350. And because we want a radial measurement, we're going to hit divide by 2, and then enter, and it does all the math for us. Next one we're going to do is this one right here. We're going to go right off the datum again to this endpoint. We're going to drag this on over. According to the print, it's 950 thousandths in diameter. Divide by 2 to give us a radial measurement. And that snaps the measurement into place for us. Next one that we're going to be looking at is this point. From here to our datum, dragging our point back over. And on this particular one, you have to look at the section or excuse me, the detail A measurements. According to the print in detail A, this is 238 thousandths. Divide by two because be mindful, those are diameter measurements. We want a radial. Next one here, we're going off this location. According to detail A, this is 364 thousandths. Divide by 2 and press enter. Notice that as we start adding in our dimensions here, these, di these lines are going from blue in color, where it's unconstrained, to black in color. Notice how when it's black in color, you can't drag it around, but when it's blue in color, you can drag it. Very last thing we need to do is add a dimension in here for this arc. So D on the keyboard. Come right off the arc. The arc is 3 inches, 298 thousandths. Enter. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to clean up our workspace. Kind of move in all of our dimension and extension lines around so we can read them a little bit easier. Drag these around. Now this is a good practice because whenever you're working in a sketch, you want to be able to read all your dimensions at a glance. It makes things a lot easier to understand what's going on. So looking at our section DD, there's a little radius right up here. We're, or, so we're going to add in our fillet. We're going to go to modify in our toolbar down to fillet. We're going to click right here on this corner and add in that 25 thousandths fillet there. Notice how as soon as I hit enter, our dimension kind of gets jammed up in there. So I'm going to drag that around so we can see it. Notice in our detail A, we got two fillets, one here and one here. I'm going to do a little shortcut, right click, repeat fillet. I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to click on this one because those two share a measurement. I'm going to type in 20 thousandths and then press enter. And notice something happened there where it didn't select that one for whatever reason. So I'm going to right, right click and repeat and type in that 20 thousandths again. All right. Now notice also in our detail A, there is a chamfer here, a chamfer here, and then in section DD, there's a chamfer over here. Now we can add these chamfers in right now as a sketch, but it's much easier to do this as a solid body. 
I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now, one thing you want to be mindful about before you proceed to either extrude a part, or in this case, we're going to revolve the part, is you want to make sure all your lines are black in color. Remember, the color black indicates it's fully defined. Since our part is fully defined, we're going to go all the way up to the toolbar. We're going to click on Solid. Then we're going to go down to Create, down to Revolve. In this pop-up window here, I'm going to drag this down. It's going to select the profile automatically for you. If you had other profiles present, you can actually deselect this profile and click whatever profile you want. But this is the only profile we have on the part. Next thing we are going to select is our axis. Our axis is this center line that we created, the very first thing that we created. We're going to click on that. And notice as soon as I click on that, we start seeing a three-dimensional body. We start seeing this solid here. I'm going to orbit this around. Notice this, this solid body looks very similar to our isometric view. Okay, if, if you are okay with how this thing looks, you're going to press OK. And then we have our first solid body as a revolve. Next thing is going back to some of those chamfers. We're going to add those in right now because we're dealing with a solid body now. We're going to go modify down to chamfer. Very first one that we're going to look at is this one here. And we're going to type in the measurement according to the print at 10 thousandths at 45 degrees. Now we need to look at this boss here for our threads. We're going to click on this edge and this edge here. So we're going to right click, repeat chamfer. We're going to click on this edge and this edge. And according to our detail A, these chamfers need to be at 35 thousandths and press enter. Now up to this point we've only been talking about internal threads. However this part has external threads. The threads are on the outside of this boss. We're going to create these threads by going on over to create and right underneath hole there is threads. Notice our pop-up window here. It's asking for what face do you want your threads to be on. Well, we want our threads to be on the, the outside of this boss. So we're going to click on that. We want these threads to be modeled. Notice that Fusion 360 is already picking up the major diameter of our threads, which is 375 thousandths. It's, the next thing we're going to look at is our designation, which is our thread pitch. Notice in on our blueprint in the external data uh, box there it's calling out a 3 8 by 16 unified coarse thread which is our very first option however there's a whole variety of different options that are commonly used you can also create custom threads in here okay so we're going to use 3 8 by 16 unified coarse and as the external data box on our blueprint states we want to be classification of fit to A. After you click on that, press OK. And notice you have some beautiful external threads. I'm going to zoom out here. And before we conclude this tutorial, you really want to kind of orbit the part around and double check your part. Be mindful that you can come on up here to the, in, the inspect measure button and you can actually double check some of your measurements and you'll commonly see me use this tool when I'm inspecting your parts. For example, if I click on the outside diameter here, you can see that the diameter is 950 thousandths. And we can check our print, and it, our print states that it needs to be 950 thousandths. I can check from this face here to the tip of our nose cone. And notice how it indicates that the measurement is 
one inch eight hundred thousandths, which matches the print. To clear out a previous measurement, you just need to click in the white space. You can measure from this face here of the shoulder to the tip, and then that is one inch five hundred thousandths, which is what the print states. So the measuring button is actually a really neat tool to double check your measurements. And as I mentioned before, you will see me use this tool a lot when I'm checking your parts. After you're done with your part, make sure you save this in your Titans of CNC folder as the Titan 84L. This concludes our very first lathe part.